How's it going, people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another title talk. It's me, Big Steve, and James Redmond in the building. A lot of love shown the first episode in the comment section. So big up everyone that showed love. Hit the like button. We got bare likes over a thousand easy. Make sure it happens again, people. Apologies yes. for being late. I'll, I'll take the I'll take the blame for being late. It's my birthday today, so it was meant to be a one o'clock stream. Things got delayed. Um happy so, birthday, yeah. man. I forgot. I forgot. Happy birthday, bro. No worries, man. Love, love, love. I'm not. A, I'm not a big birthday man now. I'm getting old now, man. You know. And then the next big one's. How old are you now? Stuff. How old are you now? <laughs> Thirty-six, bro. Fuck you know. You're getting there. You're younger than me, so. But I'm getting there. Like that's you, for sure. Like <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm still. Bro. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting to grow a proper beard, boy. So I'm just trying to catch up. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's one of those things. See my one beard now, Turkish. Have you see my beard now? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh shit. <laughs> Steve, it. What? It's linked up. What's going it's on? Like Steve. Steve. That's proper. <laughs> Prip and proper. Isn't it? Hey, he's got that shape up. Strong shape up. <laughs> the barber, the Turkish barber, he's always been on me like, shake your beard. But I said, now nah, is it off, man? I like the bowling ball head. Anyway, um, <laughs> he got me at weekend and he went, look, I'm shaping the beard up, man. You look cool with that. I went, no, I'll do it then. So he done it and I kind of like it now. So, yeah. Hey, listen. Man. Listen, I know some of my friends have been struggling for 15 years trying to get their beards to link up. So you, you've done well there, mate. I'll tell you that. You've done well. Nah, it's like Steve. How old are you, James? I'm 22, 22 23 in June. Fucking okay, no. hell. You're a baby compared uh, to me and Steve. It's crazy. Uh, oh, baby. You've got an hard paper around uh, you, kid. It's supposed to be all up, Bill. Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's it. Uh, talk about the hard paper arms, kid. Don't even talk to me about the hard paper arms. <laughs> it's got a hey, few stories. Lad. <laughs> Kirk Tales finest lad, but you got it on time, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you know I right, big up everyone in the chat as well. Big up for everyone saying happy birthday. Love for the love, man. You know what it is already. Um, really appreciate the support, the channel, and all that. Um, make sure you go show some love to James's channel in the description, Steve's channel in the description. You know what they're about, you know what they're doing. But I did, you know, see the comments, and I'm glad people appreciate you know us three coming together you know an arsenal fan from london a city fan from manchester a liverpool fan from liverpool you know you don't often get that um in the youtube circuit so uh, you know hopefully long may this continue long may this continue and long may battling for for titles continue otherwise the whole premise of title talk goes <laughs> goes in the bin and we, we might have to shake it up a little bit um that's it so, 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 because we're talking about titles we're not talking about cups, are we? We're talking about titles. We need have a title talk, not cup talk. Well, Saeed's in the chat, uh, Saeed's in the chat going for you there, James. Oh, no. Oh, no. Saeed can't. Uh, no, Saeed's... Why is Saeed talking to me? Like, I haven't <laughs> owned him for previous years. Do you know what I mean? It's a shame that we haven't actually got our names on the, the bottom of the screen like we usually can. I, I titled it 7-0. Not even James Redmond, 7-0. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we put it up there for the people there to see. There we go. I was, I, really... hope, I was hoping there'd be this big grand reveal of James being shameless, you know what I mean? <laughs> now we're there. It's still shameless. It's still there. A bit late, but shameless. <laughs> um, same way. Um, 700 people in the building hit the like button, people. Um, where, where do we start, though? Because we haven't we haven't caught up since... Do we start at the beginning since we last spoke, or do we start at the end, which was yesterday, the FA Cup? I lean more towards maybe starting at the beginning, Liverpool versus City, the 1-1. One, one. Um, we spoke okay. just before that, but... Um, James, let's start with you. I mean, 1-1. One, one. I think Liverpool fans were probably the the unhappier set of fans uh, on the big scheme of things over the 90 minutes. Probably thought that you deserved to pick up the three points. But, you know, City got the point. How, how was you feeling after that one? Yeah, it was tough. It was, it was tough just because when you get so close to beating City, the three points, when it's so close, you know it's important to get them. And when you don't, it's... It's tough, but in terms of the grand scheme, would you take a draw against City on most days, of course? And they, they, there was chances that they had as well. But I thought we nullified Harlem well. I thought uh, Kevin De Bruyne was causing problems early, but then he shut out the game after the first 20. Uh, I know everyone made a big debacle about Guardiola taking him off, but I'm not going to lie, I thought that was masterclass. I thought it was yeah. a masterclass. I thought it was the right change to make. I thought City needed to calm the game down in possession. And I thought they lost control of the game. They kind of, you can say we beat them. And you can say it was the atmosphere, and I think that contributed, but I think it was mainly themselves. I think maybe they might have let the atmosphere get the most of them, but I don't think, you know, it's happened with the, the best of teams before, and Guardiola needed to do something desperate. And sometimes you've, you've got to do that. It's, 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 you know, we took off Salah probably a bit too early in yesterday's game, but typically that, 
that can be a good decision if you're trying to take a certain approach. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, not not a problem with the results per se, but when you're so close, it, it is devastating. Like, yeah, yeah, that would have that would have a win would have made you firm favourites going into the last ten games, business end of the season. But it kind of leaves it all up in the air. Steve um, grabbed the point yeah. at, at, at you know at Anfield. You you said before the game, you know, no divine right to win there. It's always a difficult place. And it turned out to be exactly that. Yeah, we, we, we had got a good record there. We knew that um, going into it. First half, I thought we did okay. Got the goal. Um, and I just thought, it, 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 I've said it before, you've got to play the crowd there. You've got to make sure you shut them up. And, and we did first half for a bit. And then I said, right, second half, said to a lad at half-time, I went, let's do nothing stupid, keep the ball, let the crowd have a go at us for 20 minutes and just calm it down. No problem. Fucking 90 seconds in, you know, Laurel and Hardy decide to play a pass to each other and Edison goes and volleys him. And then uh, it's a penalty. Then the crowd's back on your case then. And then it, you, from there on then, you've got it all to do. And like you say, and, and what we did is um, we rid our luck a little bit, but let's not forget as well. We could have won it at the end there. Doku's gone through and hit the post inside of the post straight back to Keller. So then yeah. I think that sort of put Liverpool on the back foot a bit, thinking, hold on a minute. Because as you watched yesterday, near the end, Liverpool pushed too many men forward. That's what they did against us. So at the end of the day, I think you could sense this relief when the whistle went. I think it was a great game of football. I think both teams had a goal. And I think when they blew the whistle at the end, because I thought in the stadium it was a penalty. I was right in front of me, Doku, and I thought, fucking that's a pen. Yeah. And then when he didn't give it, Obviously, I haven't seen the replay, so I'm in the ground. I did my after match thoughts. People going, "Why did he was you he was that? commenting on my Instagram before he's even seen the replay?" That's what Sam <laughs> does. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, um, the way he's laughing as well. He knows he did. I, I was like, wait, honestly, it's too easy to troll people these days, man. People don't even, people don't even realize that I'm trolling, you know, and it's so bad because you take it serious in that, man. I, I don't like with... that. I, I don't like that because, like, people think I don't mean stay. Have a thing for somebody. People DM me saying, "Isn't he sort on that stay?" And I'm sure people message him saying that. But then you're yeah. thinking, like, don't you get it? Don't you understand what it is? That that it's like yesterday's game. They chance, we chance. It's back and forth. It's basically what English football was built on, really. So, yeah, it I don't get good, why it people. Was good, it was a good point for us in the end, and um, it was a good point for you at Arsenal in the end. Um, so at the end of the day. Yeah, I think it, it we've just it's, it's all up in the air still. I don't think anybody's a, a clear favourite. I don't think anyone wants to call it at the minute. No, no, that, I, I agree. I mean, we will play, we're playing each other soon. We'll, we'll have another show before then to talk about it a bit more in depth. But Arsenal came out the winners in in that fixture, in my opinion, especially when you couple it up with the Brentford win as well. Which listen, yeah. it, it was hard work in the end. It wasn't like the the, the smokings we've been we've been delivering left, right, and centre. We need those. You need yeah, those hundred percent, hundred percent. You need to be tested every once. Be... Otherwise, you get carried away a little. You know, um, it, we, yeah, we, yeah. Ain't, we ain't Man City. We ain't got Man City's squad or Man City's experience and and title credentials yet. So, getting carried away heading into the business end of the season, I don't think it would have boded well for a young side. But Porto and Brentford back to back difficult games that we you know we got past to, through the skin of our teeth. I think it puts us in a good position. Um. I don't really want to dwell on the Doku red card thing too much because you know it's been neither it's do been, I. It's been done yeah. to not red card a penalty thing. It's been done to death now. Um, I, I I see points from both sides. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, in modern day football, you you do expect them to be given. But in modern day football, we also don't expect much from the referees. So we need to, we need to understand we need we need to understand there is a level of subject. Like of course, there's some decisions that are definitive, but I mean. There is a level of subjectivity to stuff like that. You know, if you're going to think that he ran into him and, and he made the most out of it, then you're not going to think it's a pen, are you? But if you're going to look at it from the opposing view and it's like, Doc, you shouldn't have had this foot that high. At the end of the day, they go for you, they go against you. It didn't that day. We had other chances as well. So uh, even yeah. like yesterday, you've got to take your chances. So it's, it, that, yeah. it, otherwise, it's going to cost you anyway. And, and like you said about Arsenal then, you, you need those, mate. You need those. It weren't that long ago where I was celebrating the Nottingham Forest results and, you know, you. you they're the type of things that keep you in the title race. That's what gets you to, yeah. to, to the month of May. Do you know what I mean? Even if you can't make it to the last day, you need those type of results to just keep you in there. Because I think that's what Arsenal fans want, isn't it, Turkish? They just want to be able to say, it's May and we're still here. Like, that's yeah. something. Okay, yeah, we want to get over the line and eventually I'm sure we will. But 
where you was two, three years ago, you're biting anyone anyone's hands off just to have that belief for that long, really. Yeah, that's what football is, belief and yeah. hope and, and dreaming. I mean, that, you know, yeah. as much as I entered the YouTube scene very critical, not so much a football fan looking at the owners, looking at the bottom line profits and where we're spending money. That was because of the situation we're in. Really, a football fan shouldn't care about who the owner is. A football yeah. fan shouldn't care about who's being paid what or what we're paying for, for players. And I'm just glad that Arsenal are back to a place where I'm not looking at the Cron case too much. Oh, don't worry, I haven't forgiven them. And there's still one eye, you know, they're, they're waiting to, to turn back around and see and see what they're about. But we just need to focus on the pitch. And that's something you two have been doing for years now, you know, week in, week out. A lot of Arsenal fans are saying to me this season, oh, this season's going quick. When you're challenging, seasons go quick. I don't know if you two agree, but when you're challenging for trophies, seasons just go by in the blink of an eye. It's when yeah. you're not challenging that season's labour and, you know, you're out of competitions by February and you've got nothing to play for. You've just got to watch the rest of the league. I was tired of that. Arsenal yeah. got no divine right to win anything. Like we, You know, we're a massive club. We've got great heritage, great history. But the facts of the matter are that, you know, Man City can win a league, can win a champion. Liverpool can win a league champion. Arsenal, now you can say, all right, they can win a league. Maybe not Champions League yet. We need to show that. But... That's just what fo being a football fan is about. Steve, um, again, you've said for years Arsenal to be patient um, and the club were patient. Maybe not most of the fans, including myself, but we're top of the league. That Brentford win puts us up. We had to win. Um, are you still confident for the Premier League title this season? Are you still, you know, because you're, you're a guy that, you know, you say how you feel. You don't beat around the bush. There ain't no sitting on the fence with you. Do you still think Man City are the you know are going to win the Premier League? I do, yeah. I think I think what we've seen last few years, you know what I mean. Five titles out of the last six, we've had some toe to toes runnings. You've got to be confident in your team and the manager. And I think nothing's changed from us. You know, last season we had a little bit of a wobble in the middle of the season where people were writing us off, and we went and won the treble. So I think there's a lot of twists and turns to come. I do think it's going to be difficult. I think the free horse race makes it difficult because it gives a chance for somebody to sort of hang back and, and, and let another two get involved and then jump in at the end and maybe snatch it. But, you know, you're going to see some crazy results in the next few weeks. You're going to see it. It happens every year. You're going to see results where you think, where's that come from? And, um, yeah, I just think it's exciting. It's different. And... Yeah, it's going to make a lot of us. It, it doesn't. I said on the overlap, it makes you ill, right? And people, if you know, you either know or you don't know. Do you know, when you go every week and you're trying to get there and you're arranging travel and then you're flying to Europe and you're coming back and doing an FA Cup semi, your life just football constantly for months, and you've got to win because if you don't, you know what it's like. You lose. You get the pressure. You go on shows. You get the grief. So yeah, and you know, losing a title. It's not, it's not good. You know, you had it mm. last year with Arsenal near the end or you bottled it. Liverpool have come so close. So James added it with little points and that. I've only had it once in the last few years, but then Liverpool ran away with it that year. So it wasn't even bad. Yeah, yeah you nearly ever got dragged over the course. You know what I mean? Two, That's why two City are winning to us. Our year two of us are going to get disappointed. Yeah, our year winning is bad. Our year winning is bad to the year we won the league. Because you knew. Quite early on, like before December, I think everyone knew the score with that with that season. Um, otherwise, like it's always last day with City. But nah, take us low key. You must win this league title, you know. Nah, you must. <laughs> I was gonna come over lad. to you next, James. I was gonna. It's... Can I? Can I? Can I say why I was gonna come over to you next before you continue? Yes, you may. Like the, the first show we done, I can't remember word for word what you said. I should have probably watched it back, but you pretty much said. You know, Arsenal are pretenders. That wasn't the exact quote, but you you, you said Arsenal, you know. Were, oh, were... we're misinterpreting the words now. Not oh, misinterpreting. I'm a, you know, I'm just delving nah, into the... it's not. It's actually not. It's fine words. It's just a bit extreme. I wouldn't say pretenders. I'd just say not ready yet. You know what I mean? I am not ready yet for this stuff. I think you get to make boss. I think it starts to fall a bit. And I think it goes into the natural progression of the, the, the remaining two teams. And I think we come out on top. Uh, but you must, because I'm seeing pray for Bayern all over Twitter. I'm seeing all these things. <laughs> no, I, I swear, the, do I swear these beat you 10 to. So, no, just, no, no. James, James if I go on Twitter and pull out some of the Liverpool fans' comments, yeah, how would you like it on next show? Because you I know the Liverpool I, fans go wild online as well. The James yeah, it is. Well, just, just let me tell you this, yeah. 
I commented on James's post this morning about the game yesterday, bit of wind up. <laughs> Liverpool fan. With right, listen, <laughs> Liverpool, <laughs> Liverpool fan sent one back and he said, I would rather lose to Man United than win any of them trophies that you won. And I thought, fuck's sake, man. <laughs> Losing's the new winning now in Liverpool. No, he, 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 no he, meant, he, meant, he meant the doubts over it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Steve, Second in the new first. Oh. 115 <laughs> charges in a Premier League, not just the Premier League alone. No, no yeah, I, I actually I can't even bother to read through all those comments because Steve replies to them as well. I just go, Steve, lads. I'm, Steve he, loves he, it. That's scoring for Steve. He, he does. He does, yeah. I love no, it. He does love it. Love no, it, you, you, says, well, you were rattled. Why do you why do you reply? I say I reply to everyone. When I left the big so, six, yeah, 760 messages the day after, yeah. Turkish, did I reply to every message? Yeah, yeah, you did. You're a man <laughs> of the people. Man. You're a man of the every people. <laughs> hey, that is funny. the conversation of the big six went on for a week. A week. Because I just Feel that if someone took time, if they're calling me names, they don't get a reply. But if they if, if they're obviously want to talk to me, I just think it's good to talk to people. People are uh. people, man. You know what I mean? If I've got the time, I'll do it. If I don't, and at the minute it's hard, but like you say, it's, it's only a bit of banter and that. But people take it way too serious now. No, they do. No, they do. They do. They get dead emotional over it, don't they? I was fuming after yesterday as well, but I didn't feel like it was just one of those games. You know what I mean? But uh, what was we on the top of? Yeah, yeah, it like Arsenal. Must. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Arsenal need to. Um, I think they they need to get over the line this season because it. Get, I feel like every club has a cycle, don't they, with a team where it just seems it's right. The manager's right. The team's right. The, it's easy to think. I I reckon it's easy to think this team's going to play together for four or five years because they're all young. Yeah, I think yeah, that's I'm so lying. easy. I'm not yeah, it, how, how many teams have you seen young squads, quality squads break apart within three or four years? It happens. Arsenal being, Arsenal being a prime example of Fabregas, Nasri era when we all, you know, moved into the Emirates, it looked like we had a great young side and then yep. one by one they all started leaving. Why? Because we wasn't winning stuff, so. Yeah, yeah. Even So another year of not winning something. Okay, Saliba loves Arsenal. Very well could stay at Arsenal for years. If you don't mm -hmm. win something this year, say you have a little bit of a drop-off the next year and it requires you to bounce back the following, is Saliba going to sit there and go? Especially if big teams like Madrid start knocking. You just start to think, don't you? You know what I mean? Like, no. it, it needs to happen for Arsenal if you want this to be a continuous... If you want the team to develop the way the team can, you need yeah. to start getting something to incentivise them. I, 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 I look at Arsenal, me, yeah. And I think that's a title-winning team. I look at the team. I say fans as well. I, I, I look, you I look at them. the goalkeeper. They've got the best. I look at the centre backs, full backs, yeah. And then I look at Declan and Odegaard in the midfield. I look at the wingers, and I think that that's a that's a good team. That's a really good side. And then, but City, City have had some really good sides in the past, and they just didn't have that mentality key. But I think. I think it's a bit different. I think you, you had the they had the fingers burnt last year. Everyone ran away with it too, did they? And I think they have learned from that. And it's just about getting over the line now. And, and it, listen, it wouldn't surprise me if, if Arsenal won the league. I'd think, well, fair enough. After last season, the way they bottled it, they, they, they've put that right and they've came, they've came on and they've done it. But it's so hard to do. I mean, you look at Man City when they won the league with Aguero. You look how fine line that was from, from us having the biggest bottle job ever seen on the planet. From all we had to do was beat QPR at home, and we had to rely on Aguero in the ninety-three twenty. That's how fine line it is, and it gets talked about now as the greatest title moment and all that. If that ball off Aguero, it's the post. United won the league. You know what I mean? And yeah, that's it. Whole yeah. season's gone to shit. We've won the league. We've never been remembered as that. You remember the bottle jobs? You bottled it against QPR, and that's how fine line it is. And this is why I feel that there's just going to be some twists and turns in it. And I think it's just a team that holds. Holds the, the 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 fucking bottle to the end, wanna... and that's why City know they can do it. Liverpool yeah. have done it. Everyone looks at Arsenal and thinks, "Can they do it?" But I think once you do it, if Arsenal do it, I think that's massive for Arsenal. And I think then that's when you you start to see Arsenal then winning things regular. I think we need to. We need to. And I mean, J James has got a point. I mean, I saw this comment coming, Jacob saying, "Why are you allowing him to run that narrative? What narrative? I, I haven't heard. I haven't heard nothing." That you know should be a problem to Arsenal fans in the last two minutes. Why are you fuming? Why are you fuming? James, Stop fuming. This is Go a problem. We, but this is a problem we have in our fan base. And 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 I think I see some Liverpool fans online that are saying United as well, but Arsenal right now 
you know, we're, we're different. Y- your James shit doesn't say, stink. James didn't, doesn't say stink. Nothing, James didn't say nothing wrong. I mean, what he I said... said I, is, I said what aligns with the majority of Arsenal fans' belief. If you ask Arsenal fans to do a combined 11 with City and Liverpool, I guarantee they will do everything in their power to get majority Arsenal players in that 11. What that tells me is you rate your players on a current basis that they can supersede clubs like Liverpool and Man City, which in reality, City had quite an underwhelming window to a lot of degrees, lost a few key names in terms of depth. Us, we're in the first season of a rebuild. We got rid of our whole midfield. So that means Arsenal, from a team that just missed out the way that we missed out the season before we won it, this is the season where you catapult and go on and win it. Based on historicity of the league, based on your progression as a club, your club has never been so fine on a depth basis. The depth of your team is the most impressive it's been, probably. If you want to talk about the Invincibles and that era progression... You know, depth wise, yeah. this is where it this is the best you can possibly get where you've got Champions League winners like Jorginho who's in and out of the team. You've got okay, Kai Havertz was a lot of questions, but systematically, I think in the past has shown he can be fine. And systematically he's shown he can be fine. Kind of like I'm not comparing Henderson to, to, to Havertz, but I'm just saying Henderson, systematically solid player. You need those players at times. James Milner as well, those type of ones. So I, I just think I just think yet you must because and I don't think it's controversial and if you don't think you must then when you're saying you've got the best players what what what's the issue yeah and that's and that's where I differ to to some of the people you're talking about because I don't want to look past this season because I don't like the questions of what happens if we don't do this like what do you think of Mikel if we don't do this or my thing is we must win a major trophy by the end of next season. And now, listen, there's going to be a lot of people saying, Turkish, next season, what are you saying? Raise your standards. Or, just, just hear me out. Hear me out here. By next season, we have to win a major trophy. That's not me saying that we don't have a strong chance to win one this year and we shouldn't go and try and take this chance we have for the second year in a row to win a major trophy. I'm not saying that. But when James alludes to contracts and alludes to you know, time and, and when you look back at the contracts that Saliba signed or... Saka signed and so on. A lot of them players protected themselves in a sense too, where the contract is not too many years. So at the end of next season, some of these, two, three of these contracts, I believe it's Saliba, Saka and Odegaard, or it might be Martinelli. It, it's, it's two, three of the you know key young players we have. They'll have two years left on their deal. Now we all love them and I get that. I, I also love Fabregas. I also love Nasri. I also love Van Persie at, at you know, points in, in, in my Arsenal support in life. But they don't, you know, they're here. It's business for them. You know, it's also, it's business, but it's also legacy. Some players will rest on their laurels and get paid money and be happy with it because they're in a city they like, maybe London. They're getting paid a few hundred bags, 150, whatever. They're happy. But some players want to stamp their mark and and, and li- leave their legacy. Like, like a Van Persie when he left Arsenal. I hate Van Persie, but I understand why he did it. And when you yeah. look back at it, it, he justified why he did it. Van yeah. Persie wouldn't have been known how he's known now if he hadn't go, gone on to do that under Sir Alex Ferguson and United. As much as I hate it, trust me, I hate him. Would you I, say the same about Ashley Cole, Turkish? Ashley Cole? Ashley Cole was a bit I, different I think for me because mm. Van Persie left when we was already stale. Ashley Cole left when we were still very much a force. Obviously, the way his next 10, 15 years panned out, it's justified. But at that time, it just felt like if for he that stayed, reason, he also would have re- won stuff. For the foresight of either himself or his agents or whoever, that foresight to see Arsenal with this and then you... And, and even though there might not be many signs when he did leave, you can still feel... I don't know. I feel like you can feel something. And then if you're going to get presented a new project like Chelsea which was a super project. And I think just the moment he won that yeah. Champions League... This, I think this it was more that. I think it was more yeah. that. Chelsea, the money's come in, oil money, they're spending left, right and centre. Oh, I agree. Arsenal don't want to give me the five, ten bags more. I Let agree. me go over to Chelsea. I think it was more that. But then, the trophies justified it away from money. You know? Because I remember back then, there was a lot of Coles a mercenary, Van Persie the same, um, Ale- I want you Sanchez, Nasri, Adebayo... All of these players went on to, to go and win stuff, you know, yeah. win stuff that Arsenal weren't winning. So as much as, yeah, you could say that the reason was money, at the end of the day, the legacy is, well, all right, they, they made more money, but they also won a hell of a lot more trophies than they would have if they had stayed. 
Yeah, so Raheem Sterling. Ra- Raheem, Raheem Sterling's another fine example of it. He's a fine example of it. I was like upset when he left, but I, I understood it because we saw City going and us. It was different. So if he, if he said he was doing it for trophies, he weren't lying, and it, and he proven to be the case. Yeah, yeah. So that's why that's why I lean and say like I don't think what James is saying is wrong. Someone said obviously the whole you must thing. The whole you must thing now in football has just become part of the. The banter amongst fans. I think it applies a bit more to you, though. I think it applies just a bit more to Arsenal right now. Do you get what I'm saying with the fact you just missed out last year? You know, contracts are running out, as you said. You need to get something. You're already this close. You're in the best position. Yeah. We've just drew. It's in your hands. And we're there's approaching it. Yeah. There's different ways to look at you, must, though. Because, for example, I'll say, all right, beginning of the season, I'd say... Man City, treble winners, they've won five out of the last six. They must. They're the best manager, the best team. Okay, that's the must there. Then you look at Arsenal and you think, all right, they just challenged. They led the league for the majority of the season. They bottled it at the end, but they've broke their transfer record with, with Declan Rice coming in. They've also added Havertz, spent 200 mil. They also must. Then you look at Liverpool, who at the beginning of the season, it wasn't a must, but then being top of the league and Klopp making the announcement that he's going to, you know, leave at the end of the season, then I think it becomes somewhat of a must for Liverpool. So there's there's different musts coming from different angles for the different clubs, in my opinion. Like if, if Liverpool go on to win it, a, a defining factor of that win would be, oh, when Klopp announced that he's leaving, that really galvanised the side. If Man City win it, the argument is they're the best side in the league. If Arsenal win it, the argument will be, oh, they're next up. Arteta's the next top man. So there's narratives and reasons why all of our teams, you know, must, in my opinion, this season. But, James, I know when, you know, online, Arsenal fans, bro, I don't think anyone argued with Arsenal fans online more than me amongst us lot. I don't think uh, we argue more than you and them. You and them argue, James, or Saeed argues, or Matisse. I'm, I'm at loggerheads with a lot of Arsenal fans online because... It's so wild. It's so you're either that side of the fence or you're that side of the fence. There's no balance in between. I mentioned this on my channel the other day. Everyone wants to, you know, you know, stand on one side of the argument. There's no, hmm, but you know, maybe this, maybe that. That's just the online football world now. And Arsenal yeah. fans online, obviously, over the years, we've just we've just got a hell of a lot of people making a hell of a lot of noise. And now we're actually challenging for titles. I know it's getting under people's people's skin. Steve, is it? Have Arsenal fans changed to you in the last few years? Because a couple of years ago, Arsenal no, fans man. used to man, love it. How they changed me because he used to I was sticking you. up for him and that. I used to, I used to tell them about Arteta and that, and then they used to say, "Oh, big Steve, with fair play, always respects Arsenal." And, and my stance never changed. The only thing that changed was all of a sudden they're coming up to me going, "We're gonna fucking do you. You fucking think you're this? We're Arsenal." We're... I was like, "Hold on a minute, mate. Relax. You're not won nothing yet, don't you?" And then they all started diving on me last season. We're top of the league. You're finished. When it backfired, and I fired back and went, "Where's your fucking league title? You're a fucking dickhead." Hold on a minute. You draw this line. They drew the battle line to me. I never stepped to them. They stepped to me, and it fell flat on the face. So the real Arsenal fans know the ones that. And don't get me wrong, I've got a lot of mates, Arsenal fans, through the big six, a lot of the, the genuine accounts over the years, we've had this talk and that. If I go on AFTV, I get uh, well-received. If I go on Curtis Shaw, I get well-received. If I go on Turkish before the game, I always get well-received from the majority of Arsenal. But these are section of the wild ones. It's a bit like Game of Thrones, Jed. You've got the wildlings that are over there on that side of the wall. <laughs> yeah. And you've got the honest, decent ones on this side. And we're there looking down on them wildlings thinking, wow, they're fucked. And then one day, somebody moved the gate and they're all fucking steamed in. <laughs> so so yeah. they're all mixed together. You don't know which is the wild ones, which aren't the wild ones. But listen, and, and I think a lot of what they say to me, a lot of the guys is like, imagine if Arsenal win the lead, it, it'll be unbearable. We've said that with Liverpool and that, but you get that with every family. I think we well, I, I yeah. think... I think they're the worst, but we're close. <laughs> like, we're an horrible team to win the league. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I know just because of me. I know what I'm going to be like if we win the league and you are finished. I mean... Yeah, here's an example, finished. yeah. Every year, win, lose or draw, AFTV, I walk round to the to the, to the AFTV yeah. on my own, yeah? Do my interview. Charity Shield, you beat us. I walk round on my own. I was on my own. Nobody there, yeah? This season in the league, I tried to get round, yeah? There was people fighting with each other on the floor. Some yeah. guy pulls a knife. Someone's spat at me. The police was pulling everyone. And I was like, they, they've gone insane because they've won a league game. And that, is, oh, and that is real life shit, man. It's like somebody threw a grenade yeah. and the police blew off. And that's why it's like, 
a lot of the proper Arsenal guys are genuine guys and, and it's good. AFTV, a, a lot over the years, people were having banter when they're having meltdowns and all that. But at the end of the day, now, I feel that they, they just got to get this pre get the Premier League over the line and then Arsenal are back then. Then all the talking can happen then. You know what I mean? But you know, if Man City were, were top of the league and I was chatting bare shit and we haven't won a league for 20 years and we fell yeah. flat on our ass, how much shit would I be getting? How much shit that's, would James be getting? Yeah, that's what it is. I'd, I can't be shameless off of if, buts and maybes. I want to be shameless off absolutes. So I'll bring in a famous quote from James there. But by that, I mean... Yes, it looks like we're going to win a major. Yes, it looks like we're on the right trajectory. But I'm just holding my horses right now because I've seen us get close before. I've seen us think that we're turning a corner before and it just hasn't happened. So I'd rather us and get here's, just, here's one little bit of advice. Yeah. Let me tell you this, yeah. When a fan base is calm, yeah, it's fucking scary. It's scary. When you go up against someone and you're trying to rattle them and they're calm as yeah. fuck and they've, got, and they've got that mentality where they know if they're 2-0 down, they know they're coming. That is scary. When you go up against a, 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 a fan base that's all emotional and, and, and lives on their emotions and that, that's when you know you can get at certain fan bases easy. That's what you got to learn. We used to be the same at City until we started winning. Then we realised then we trusted the manager more. We were a bit more calm. And then now the City fans are a little bit calm. People say it's arrogance. People say it's cocky. It's not. It's because you're confident in your team and your management and your players. And I believe that Arsenal from last year is a lot different than Arsenal this year. Yeah. I do believe that every game you're taking it step by step, you're going, you're winning, you're plugging it on. And I don't think too many people are getting carried away. So that's the best path you need to be on for me. Do you love... Mm. Do, all right, we'll see, we're on Arsenal. We might as well just touching on them again on the Champions League front. Are you of the belief afterwards that... Listen, fan opinion aside, because I know Arsenal fans on that, how they can make you feel but after watching that portal 120 minutes and the penalty shootout was you two of the belief that oh arsenal had to scrape past porto to get it done or was you of the belief that arsenal have you know learned you know would have learned massively off of those two legs and go into extra time and a penalty shootout because we've got such a young side do you think that boded well for us or do you think that was not a great look for us um who should we start whoever james yeah qualification no matter how you do it, it builds on the team. It really does. You know, there's plenty of examples of Liverpool in the past where we've had to scrape through legs and create history. If you go on and fluke the Champions League, say you played terrible in the quarter, in this, in this quarter semis. Uh, say you you felt you were underwhelming in the game against Porto, which I think there was a lot of elements where you was, you know, not even converting your chances at times. I just think when you just get through it, when you get through a penalty shootout, it, it's. That's the closest thing to a final, even though it's the round of 16. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. that a penalty shootout victory is... It, I was clinging on for the hope of a penalty shootout yesterday. So it's like... that Because that's where you get the opportunity to just have a little bit more air in the game. So if yeah. Arsenal do lean on that, I know it's Porto and, and people will compare past scorelines and stuff. But you were up for it, man. They set up to play the way they played and it worked well. Um but it just wasn't enough because we all knew the quality superseded. So, I, yeah. I, I'm not, I don't think you'll win the Champions League and I don't think it was a great performance, but I thought it's definitely going to encourage the lads to go further. It's going to build, it's it's character building and that's what you mm -hmm. need to need nights like that. Yeah, the draw didn't help us either, Steve. I mean, you know, potentially we it's, meet in the semis if we can get the job done in the quarters. Yeah, it's, it's, the, the, Listen, I thought it was a good Champions League performance because I've seen City over the years go to Gidda, Try and kill these teams, get caught on the counter attack, leave it all to do in the second leg and get knocked out. Leon, Monaco, there's a long list. Yeah. I thought Porto was a tough place to go. I thought Arteta thought, you know what, we'll go there and we'll just relax a little bit. We'll bring them back to the Emirates and that's where we do the damage. But the difference in the Champions League, these teams have got no respect. You look at Pepe, 41 years old. Oh, he was rattling people there like like no one, like he had no respect for no one. That guy, Champions League, they're fighting for it, Porto. And you got to give credit to Porto. They came, they had a goal. And listen, it's a great win. It's a great win. You're through. You've got Bayern Munich. These are the nights you dream yeah. of as a fan. Bayern Munich at the fucking two legs. You've got to enjoy it, man. You know, yeah, Bayern man. Munich at the, at the minute are there, are there to be got at. For my, in my opinion, I think the Emirates is key. No fans, turn the heat up, boil them alive there. If you can go to the Allianz, winning 1-0, 2-0, I think you've got a great chance. But if Bayern Munich can keep it 0-0, you've got to go back to Bayern. 
It's going to be hard, man. Who, who it's a it? tough one, man. Hmm. Um, who would go you, on, Steve? Who? Let's just say City go through. Who would you prefer to play in the semis? Would it be Bayern or would it be Arsenal? I think I prefer Bayern because it's. I think yeah. you, you play different against the foreign foreign teams. And last year we got drawn on that side of Bayern Real Madrid. We went through and we done it. Um, with Arsenal, I think the players know each other. It's an English tie. You know, remember Liverpool and Chelsea that time? It didn't quite feel right. It was a bit minging. And I think yeah. that's what that's what I don't want. But um, I, I'll take anything over two legs. The second leg at the Etihad is a massive advantage. Massive. Yeah. So yeah. we've got to go to the Bernabeu and keep it tight. Can get beat 1-0, no problem. But we've got to go to the Etihad again and crank it up. But they're going to be ready for it this time. Last season, we laid a big trap. And, and it worked. This season, they're going to think, we ain't falling for that again. So, these games against Real Madrid now, for me, are going to be so, so hard. James, who, who, who do you think is going to win the Champions League? I'm edging Real Madrid or, um, or City. I think the winner of that fixture will be the one who probably goes on to do it. But, do you know what? This sort of name, I know this sounds weird, uh, but Bayern Munich, there's something that tells me because I know that they've got Tuchel and I know he isn't doing great, but there's something about Tuchel and cup competitions and mm. being able to get all the way to the end and even possibly get over the line. I know he's not a great, he's not in great form as a manager, but I just think the hunger for like Harry Kane, Bayern Munich, who've underwhelmed in the Bundesliga, are likely to lose that league. I can't believe they're both them games on the same day, so we can't yeah. even watch them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough one. That I think I think that's a big one for Arsenal as well because they're known kind of like what Real Madrid is to us or has been over the past ten years. They've kind of been to Arsenal in a sense like no chance when you play them. There's a chance now, but it's like us oh, and Real Madrid. Like we dominate that. I don't want to say dominate it, but we we I'd say we outperformed them in a lot of ways. We were the more of the offensive team in the Champions League final. Didn't take all of our chances. Courtois had a masterclass of a game, but. He got over the line through experience. I wonder, are Arsenal at the point that City was when they beat Real Madrid in the knockout stages? Are Arsenal there where they can overcome that hurdle? I'm not sure. Because even though they're in bad form, they've still got some good players. And they've got players who know how to make a game of stuff. And mm -hmm. just when you've got someone like Harry Kane, you know yourself. He's someone who can just get a couple of goals out of nowhere. So, we'll Look see. at the team. And, and he's fire Look at the team. They might think league's gone. We've got to throw it all in here for That's the champion. You look That's at the what team, Leroy, Sané, Bustinaro, you know, Kane, you, you look yeah, at the team, you think, you know, last year we done them at the Etihad first. We went to Bayern and we were chilled. And um, and what I tell you it? something. Three at the Etihad. Yeah, and I'll tell you what I noticed, one one at the finger. I'll tell you what I noticed about Bayern Munich. I've been Bayern Munich about three or four times. And every time I've been to Munich, this Bayern Munich, their fans just laughed us off as like, this Man City team, you're just money, you're this, you're that, right? And they yeah. always disrespected us. You could tell by the way you're talking to them, they thought we were shit, yeah? When we went the last time, their ass was falling out. They thought, these are fucking the real deal here. Yeah. We're fucking shit in it. And that was great for me because I could sense it and I thought, you know what? People are starting to respect it. And we went there and we did a disciplined performance. We let them throw the sink at us. We caught them out. We got the 1-1 and we went through. But, you know, it's going to be hard for Arsenal, but if, he, if you've had Arsenal beat Bayern Munich, people are going to start taking serious note. And then, yeah. you know, game on. It's hard, it's hard because you look at winners in the Champions League and they tend to go through a fair bit of pain before eventually coming out the back end with a Champions League. And I think that's what James alludes to with the whole... I league think Mikel Arteta is a better manager than Tommy Tuchel. So, no, do right. so, so, do so we are. But now we've got to talk about circumstances because, yeah, what um, somebody can do in the conference to get a team staying up in the conference. Tommy is Tuchel's not been in the conference. He's been with I'm, Chelsea, I'm, he's been with Paris Saint-Germain, he's been with Bayern I'm, Munich, I'm, I'm, and he's, done, I'm, he's not been good enough. So I'm only using the example because I'm basically emphasising this different type of managers for different type of jobs and experiences. Are you, you know, is Pep Guardiola going to want to go and sort out the lads and tell them to get fucking stuck in, mate. Get stuck in, get fucking techos, do this. Which is the <laughs> football you need to play in lower leagues. Point is, Thomas Tuchel, his style adheres to cup competition. You're right, he's underwhelmed on league form. He underwhelmed at Chelsea. He underwhelmed um, at Bayern Munich. But he got to a Champions League final with PSG. Okay, you could argue he should have done that. He won the Champions League with Chelsea. We all know he shouldn't have done that. 
You know that, Steve. You know they shouldn't have been winning that. Should have won the league last year, but, but Borussia Dortmund only had to win. Yeah, so now yeah. we're talking, but, yeah, but now we're talking about league form as well, because again, league form. I've just agreed with yeah, he's massively underwhelming. But now we're also talking about he was through a thin hair away of getting a league cup, an FA cup, but lost that on penalties. Point is, he's a complicated manager to face. In cup competitions, he knows how to set up a team. You can't ignore the record. There is traditions. There is a reason why a manager like Unai Emery can go out and manage Sevilla or Villarreal or someone and give them European success. He's that type of manager. There's a reason why Jose Mourinho, another one, great European success with Porto, um, with, you know, following even now with Roma. The, the, the competitions he won with them after so long not winning it. The certain managers for certain occasions. If if you are gonna doubt Bayern, I just wouldn't. I wouldn't be doubting it on Thomas Tuchel's credentials. I wouldn't be talking about this like this is a full gone conclusion. So I'd agree. If if I want Mikel Arteta at my club because he's more suited, I'm obviously gonna say he's the better manager. For this occasion, I don't know. You know, I'm not sure. It might be a tough one for Arsenal. This. Uh, the two clubs are a lot more experienced for this sort of occasion. Um, Arteta's actually yet to really listen. Arteta's done a hell of a good job. European side of things is where probably the most damning um, indictments of him come because of the way we've gone out to Villarreal. Or Olympiacos was very early for him, sporting last year. The Porto two-leg tie, I mean, after the first leg, a lot of I know a lot of fans, including myself, for PTSD. Second leg, we expect to get it done, but we expected it against Villarreal. We expected it against Olympiacos. Same against Sporting. But we got we turned it around, but we didn't turn it around where it's one of those ones you look at Mikel and say he's got the balance right in terms of European football and Premier League football. We we turned it around through hard work, grit, determination, fight, structure, and all of that. Um, so I think Arteta's yet to prove himself in Europe. Tuchel has, but it's, it's, it's a it's a great balance because I think man for man, quality for quality, I look at Bayern's side and you could probably pick up more, more stars, maybe, is the correct word for it. But I think Arsenal are a far better team. Uh, well, we, we, we've got a far better structure, so... You're right, but you're, look, you're looking at this occasion wrong. This isn't what Champions League nights are about. It's not about better team, great football... I'm sorry, lads, if you're looking at it that way, or if Arteta is, and Arteta won't be. Yeah, He's yeah. a smart manager. He knows that this is going to be tough, and he knows that Tuchel is going to set. Tuchel knows. Tuchel knows. Not going to run through brick walls for him. He's leaving. Mm. I am guaranteed. Right, fuck Thomas Tuchel. All this nonsense about fighting for the manager. Is it fighting for yourself? Is it fighting for having embarrassed myself? We haven't won no trophies this season. You're going to get people like Kingsley Coleman and all these players thinking, I'm just used to success. We're not going to get it in the league. This is our only avenue. All right, we know that this Nobed, Nobed being Thomas Tuchel, he's going, but he's actually got a track record in these occasions. He knows he's got experience. So do you know what? If I'm not going to do it for him, I'm going to do it for myself. But if I am struggling, at least I know I can go to someone who's won the competition. It's just the hunger of not winning the league. All these things coming <coughs> into this being a tough game. You can't look at it like we're going to play them off the park because we're a better team. You know what you Fine. need that? Go, go and get 20 chances. I guarantee you, if Caddy Kane gets one, you're fucked and you could be out. You need, you need on these nights in Europe, you need Warriors. In, you need that in the business end yeah. of the season too. And I think Arsenal are now far better placed than we ever have been in the Emirates era to... Like I look at the, like I look at Arsenal, and if if shit gets sticky against Bayern, I look at Gabriel and Saliba. They can go for a war. We've seen it already. I, I look at Ben White, who's got the dark heart to him. He's got a bit of a nasty streak. I like that. I look at Declan Rice. He's someone that can drag. I look at Odegaard. He's someone that can drag. Now we have got a few warriors in that team. Not in a when I say warriors, I don't mean Roy Keane, Patrick Vieira, Gennaro Gattuso. I mean warriors in a sense. They're going to work their socks off. They're going to leave one in if they need to leave one in. They're going to get physical if they need to get physical. And I and I think we have that now. And I think that's what you mean in terms of European. That it doesn't necessarily come down to team structure or the way you play football. A lot of the game was decided by the Warriors in the big moments and so on. So we'll see. We'll it's going to be a good game. Right. It's going to be a good game. I think I think that side of the, the, the draw now, City, Real, Arsenal, Bayern's uh, exciting. You know what I mean? It's going to be fantastic. I just think, you know... We're going to learn a lot about everyone's team in the next few months. This is the business end now. There's no hiding for, for no one, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, league done. Um, one point separates us. All Arsenal joint with Liverpool City, one behind Etihad fixture coming up. 
We'll talk about that soon. Champions League done. We won't touching on the Europa League yet. Um, Liverpool obviously through um, playing Atalanta next up, potentially Bayer Leverkusen and Xabi Alonso in the final. But we'll move on to FA Cup, the most recent news of the lot um, and probably the most depressing news of the lot for James. Um, but yeah, James, yesterday, uh, an FA Cup classic. Um, I will say that, an FA Cup classic that, yeah, ended with, yeah, not so much happiness for Liverpool fans. Crap, lad. Um, yeah, human, you know what I mean? Uh, the, 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 um, upon reflection, it's not the end of the world, but, you know, people probably want the, the outrages. And I was, I was fuming because you bottled a game three times, really. I mean, you know, you, you, you're winning the game uh, before the end of it, then you let them get back into it, and then an extra time you let it go twice as well. Because you let it go twice when they equalise, or the first time when they equalise. And then when you begin to lose, I'm at Diallo. Crazy. And, and even just seeing the way, like, we put everyone up for the corner is so interesting. And I don't understand the way that worked because if you're going to take that approach, I felt we sort of became united with the hunter. We were the hunters. And the same way we've kind of got the European Knights order, United have got that last minute goals order to go all out in the last minute after basically sitting back. I think the only way to combat you know, old Trafford with, with with you know that with with that club who get those type of moments. Even though they're not a good football team themselves, I thought it was interesting to just absorb it. You basically invite them for that moment to come. I was thinking, go on it, go and nail it head on, go and try and match them. I I just don't think we we wanted that game plan, and then the last minute was a bit dodgy. So United deserved it in the end because they got the goals, and and we never took our chances in the majority of the second half, but. I think everyone who's thinking this is like the end of the world for us, I think they've got it very mistaken. I think it's it's probably something you didn't want to happen. You probably wanted to have us in a league game where we've got one eye on the FA Cup semi-final. I, I don't think you want us where like it's it's the league and, and that's really what makes this a great season. Go and win the Europa League, it's good. It's good. I prefer. But, but the, league, the league makes it great. Yeah, so I mean, I've seen both sides of opinions from what this result could mean, or if you know Liverpool went through. The way I look at it is, Liverpool have surprised me a hell of a lot. Not that you know you haven't got great players and you're not a great team, you are. But you know, to be where you are in the league this year, I think it's become somewhat of a small surprise um, that that you're there. I mean, you're very much there, neck and neck with City, let's say. Not necessarily with Arsenal because City are the, you know, they're the, they're the trendsetters or the, the leaders of the last few years. But I think, is it two extra games in the FA Cup or a damning blow against Man United in the in the FA Cup? I'd much no. rather take the damning blow because I it, think it, it might have an, an effect post, whereas it's, two extra cup games, I don't really see it being much of a problem. It, it's, it, it's not about that. It's not about, um, the, you know, the extra two games being fatigue. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's f- amazing that the league is ours we've got now. To make this a great season, OK, it could have been elite if you go and win the FA Cup, the Europa League and the league. The point is, is that we haven't got the FA Cup. We're out of it. OK, yeah, of course, you prefer to go through against Man United. The, the, the idea really is just... Now it's extra hunger to make this season special has to be to win the league. You can win just the league by itself and it's a special season. I'm just saying if you win just the Europa League, it's a good season. Because yeah. we can't get the full quad, which weren't really a quad, but it was for a trophy, so we'll say it anyway. It, we can't get that, but we can still make it a great season with the league. So I'm saying it gives you a newfound hunger. It's not about minutes, but like... Even that aspect, you know, minutes and stuff, you know, we have, we've played, I think it's six more games than United in the new year. You know, it, there is going to be a game eventually that you lose is the point. If you've got Arsenal and, and City winning every game and this, that and the other, there's going to be a moment, we all know this, where you drop points in a game you shouldn't or you lose a game that mm. you shouldn't. It's basically just the thing that happens. It stings as well, but it's not the end of the world. And I don't think it's going to turn around our season in a negative way. In fact, I think teams should be more worried about us now. Um... So, yeah, it was a day for United. Fair play. We can get them in a couple of weeks in the Prem. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, that that's why I like it as well, because it gives United that belief they can actually do it. But we'll see. You might yeah. just go roll them over and then, both, you know. You've, and yeah, you've also got to be, like bear in mind, Turkish, we were fighting for everything for the quad. I don't like this narrative, like, oh, it means more to United. No, I, you can't watch me watching that game and say it meant more to United fans. You can't. I wanted everything out of that game. And, and what I liked about it, because... Obviously, we mentioned about our ages and stuff at the start of the show, yeah. but there's something, there's something about like watching 
documentaries on old school football, how the English game was really developed. And, you know, like, it, it, it intrigues me to a point where, like, look at this passion, look what it was about, look what it meant, and look at the authenticity of it. This game reminds me of traditional FA Cup meant the world. It was like the Champions League final in itself. It was that type of game. It was one of the greatest FA Cup games in recent history. So from that aspect, it was good. But you either come out on top or the bottom. If, you, if it's the latter, it's going to be yeah. a stinger. I, I lost I, more sleep I, last night because of the game, lad. So it was one of those. I hear that. I hear that. Steve, it's looking like a, another Manchester final. Um well, if you get the jobs done against Chelsea and Coventry, I think you know. Jeez, man, just said Chelsea. No, no way. <laughs> nah, listen, no way. Listen, don't forget. Don't even, listen. Everything means more to Liverpool. That's what Trent said. You know what I mean? This loss means more. If that's it's actually true, true, though. That's, that's actually true. true. It's not true. It's a weird scout's this, logic that you can't possibly. More. You've just said this if anyone watched more. you watching the TV, they couldn't say it means more to you. Well, if you watch me in Istanbul yeah. and City won the treble. You wouldn't, yeah. you would, that's what I mean. So, this is what I'm saying. It's daft, isn't it? Come on, yeah. It's Trent trying to Trent trying to say that a, a cup means more to one fan base than it doesn't, you know what I mean? If someone, if Leicester won the Premier League. Do you think that meant less to Leicester than when you won the Premier League? I think, I think when we win a trophy after years and years of falling short and all that, that is a 100 more, more trophies than any team in England, man. That, you have a that league league title, England, Trent man. hasn't. Trent hasn't, I haven't, so the point no, is... No, he's Trent that... spoke about your supporters. He said it means more to your supporters, yeah. and then I just say and he's talking does... about his ass. I think, I think he has a point. I think when you go and win the league every season, there's going to get to a point where there's an element of complacency. It still means a lot, but there's an element where it's... Da, da, da. I think when you go so long without winning it, to then win it, and then if we were going to win it again on Klopp's last season, absolutely 100% that means more, and I don't think it's too controversial to say from a Liverpool player. What do you think he's going to say? Do you think he's going to go out there and say City fans mean more to them? No, I, I just want... I he want, said it meant more to us. fans. It's just weird, I, isn't I it? Also think, I also think that was... I think City... See, this is the thing about City. The fan base, some of the players to it today, they have that bitchy attitude, entitled attitude, where it's like, don't talk negative about us and my shiny little thing. Realistically, what City have, have took here is, is that Trent would have said that about any club in the world. It so happened to be in the context of the conversation about your football club and he's a human. End of the day, no we think human. it means more to us. If you no disagree, human. oh no, they weird, don't use weird human. Scout oh, logic. Human. This is what I'm trying to say. Don't human. try and tell other supporters that you winning a trophy means more than to other us. teams winning a trophy. So, to us, but to us, it absolutely does. So what? Right, right, well, just say to our to supporters, us? this means the world. Don't say to, that it means more to our supporters than them supporters. Why, 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 why can't we say it in our way? Why can't we say it in our way? Because it no, because it's you. weird. That's what I'm saying. It's weird. So you go but to a city fan. Hold on a minute. You go to a but city fan battle, it? that was destroyed so at Main Road and he went from Main Road all the way to the to the treble. Yeah? Yeah, the treble. Yeah, and Trent's yes. never won a treble, by the way. So you went to the treble. This is how and you try and tell that city you know that'll be You try and tell that city fan that that meant more. You winning the Carabao Cup meant more than City winning the treble. It's bullshit. Absolutely. A Liverpool see Turkish. You can't say he's not rattled. You can't say <laughs> you analyze the body language. Valid point. Point. See, I'm making see, a valid you, point. Analyze so the you losing language. yesterday. His face is getting you losing red. yesterday. Is does that red. mean that you, it melt more to you losing yesterday than it does if we we lose? Is that how it works? His face is getting redder. Eh? He's making irrelevant points. These are all signs of getting rattled. So the point is, you've taken some words. Now I want to finish my point. Now I want to finish. Now I want to finish my point because I actually let you finish. I actually didn't even speak over you. You're speaking over me. Point is. It means more to us because Trent is a scout set. He knows the fans. He doesn't know the Manx. To his perspective, who you've got to right. criticise the source. He's coming from a scout set. He's saying it means more to us. You've took it rattled. It's not like it means more to I'm us. Now I'm going to continue my point. 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 And then when Real Madrid win it, I'm sure he'd probably say the same thing about Real Madrid. But you took it sensitive to just you. It's like ignoring the context. So it's fine you mentioned if you want to be rattled. You mentioned it's fine if you want. It was in the context of the conversation. And even if he did, it does mean more to us because he is a scouser who is talking about Liverpool. And he got asked a question in correlation. Hold on. Do you even know what he said? Because by the way you're speaking, it doesn't sound like you even know no, what he said. What? Yeah, let me hear what you think he said. Go on. T tell me and I'll work off that. So that means you don't know what he said? Go on then. Tell me what he said. He said it mean more, means more to us. 
But now he's I'm giving you the opportunity to Liverpool supporters it. and Manchester City supporters because of the way you've done it. That's what he tried Why to say. It? And then, so he tried to say it or he said that? Well, that's what he said. Did he say that word for word? I don't know, I'm not a journalist. I've read it about so, 17 times. But at the end of the day... I've got it, I've got it. How come you're how come you're having a go at someone for not knowing something word for word when you didn't know what it was word for word? No, let me read it out. You didn't even know what he said initially. You was talking about some other bullshit. How can I not know about what someone said when we're just having a discussion about what someone said? You didn't know word for word. Your answer about what he said was nothing to do with what he actually said. You was going on about how can the scouts mean more to Liverpool fans than the scouts? Let me get no, what he said. You're just getting emotional. That's it, it, you're not making. There's only one emotional person in response to mine. It's you, not me. Let me get. But, the, you're, let making, me get... but you're making a relevant point in response to mine, which makes no sense. It's got to be on correlation no. to the conversation. But go on, sir. If you read out the statement. Yeah, I've got it here. I've got it here. Just to clarify, and um, the full quote is. It's difficult. You're up against a machine that's built to win. That's the simplest way to describe City and their organisation. Looking back on this era, although they've won more titles than us and have probably been more successful, our trophies will mean more to us and our fan base because of the situations at both clubs right. financially. So, take it. So, yeah, so he's more to us. So, so, he's rattled. so, he's so rattled. you're, ra so you're you. rattled by the financial statements. He said more to us. He said more to I'm us, which was the whole point I just made. And then you said, no, he never said to us, but he did say to us, it means more to us. So he's not wrong from his perspective. How does it mean? You disagree how, how, with it. How does it mean more to you? He's a scouser. He plays for Liverpool. If it means more to us through the circumstances, through a winning machine, which is what he called you, through the more finances, which you do have, He's not saying well, that's Man City the only more trophies. Now, Man City have been more successful than you. Now I'd like to continue. to you. Yes, because okay. success doesn't correlate to me. Weird anymore. scouts logic. I've just told you, it's the same. Same as it's your not, post this morning about so, the loss, so, how much it means to you. The loss. It, listen, the loss is a loss. Everyone's gutted. It doesn't so, mean more to but, you. Tehish, Tehish, you see the way he's diverting again. We're not on the conversation. No, I'm just asking an example. I don't need to divert. Just divert yourself. Steve. Where's my whistle? How does it divert? No, how does it divert? No, because let him explain. Because now he's just making irre irrelevant responses. So how does I divert? Explain. But, but. On the, on the context of what Trent said, Never answered the I don't question. need to defend myself because Erling Haaland just killed him the next day and said, I've come to England this season, I've won a treble. Trent doesn't know what that feels like. There you go. And, so we can have a walk up. Yeah? You don't know what the treble feels like. And Haaland is absolutely right in his perspective. Trent is absolutely right in his perspective. It's going to mean more to us. See, you're arguing over it. I'm not, I'm just saying, yeah, it's, a weird, it's a weird thing to say, to say to another fan that a trophy means more to Did you say it to a City fan? Than Did than you say it them. to a City fan? No, but that's what I'm saying. It doesn't uh, mean more to, to scouts. A if you lose, it means more to scouts. If you win, it means more to scouts. If you win the Carabao Cup, scouser? it means more to scouts. If you win the league and nobody saw it, it means more to scouts. If you don't win the treble, it means more to scouts. It's all bollocks, mate. It's all bollocks. It's all absolute bollocks, mate. Because he's a scouser, but if you want to continue to get rattled by his words, then you go for it. But that's not how rattled by his words. You didn't Erling even Harlan know his quote. Erling you didn't even, you you didn't didn't even know his quote. quote. He's a quote it because you didn't no, have a clue. You what he's tried. No, I never made the claim. <laughs> I nah nah nah. Take us notice. I never even made the claim that I knew his quote word for word. No, but when you sat back on the chair wrong. and you tell me the quote, you just told me you didn't know I fucking wanted, know. The quote. I want I wanted to make sure we were I didn't know if you wanted the word for word quote. You then didn't get the quote right. And then before that, tried to have got anyway. Stay, it's sound, lads. It's sound. It's just, Listen, the I, I, I don't more. understand your argument. I don't understand us. your argument. Your grades are better than us. <laughs> yeah, you've got better air than me. You know what I mean? You've got everything, man. <laughs> I don't know how you live. You're Liverpool fans. You're just perfect, man, in every single way, man. I love it. I love it. We, we are 10 10 stick. We are 10 10. Better hair than me. Let's leave it at that one. Let's leave it at that one. Um, <laughs> because we are touching one hour, there's 2.2k here, and we've got 11 super chats still to get through. So, while nice. we start getting through the super chats, people, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe to Big Steve, MCFC, and Mr. James Redmond. Both channel links in the description. Go show them some love. And let's get into the super chat segment of the show. Southpaw says, Happy birthday, Turkish Big Steve. Nice bid. Thank you. And, and also adds, This is the most boring break for us 20 days. It is, but no. you know. It's softened by being top of the league and through in the Champions League. It could have been worse. It could have been worse. S says legacy equals Arsenal players as legends with a Premier League. Yeah. Yeah. 
hundred percent. Online fan base is not Arsenal fans. It's not reality. This is going back to the conversation we had with James earlier. And Lee says, big up that analogy, big Steve. Spot on. Patrick said, James, be real. More to us means versus to City fans. On the subject we were just talking about. And it was a scouser talking about it's meaning more to us. It's not like the prem the head of the Premier League came out and said it means more to Liverpool than City. It was a scouser who plays for Liverpool who grew up in Liverpool talking about how it means more to him. But even though one team's won more and been more successful, it means more to you. So winning more. So winning more. I think the, so winning uh, no, it did. so winning more co <laughs> correlates to meaning more. So winning more. So numbers, stats correlate to emotion. Stay back. And he cried about the charges. It's and then cried about the finances. You know what I mean? No, you cry about the charges because no, you can't even defend the charges. the charges. You mentioned you the finances. You cry about the charges. You cry about the charges. You cry about everyone not respecting Listen, the city. There's only everyone. one team. You there's only one team. team. There's only one team out of, out of my team and your team that was caught cheating, and it wasn't mine. Simple I, as that. So, so hang on a minute, hang on a minute. You've never been caught cheating once? No. Nah, sweet, 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 sweet. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. And next one we got from Ricky saying, happy birthday, Turkish. Love for the love. Big thanks for getting Big Steve on. Although he's a rival fan for two years now, I love his no-nonsense take to football. Welcome, James, as well. Big up. Come on. Big up, sir. Yeah. Sure, it says I crack up that Spurs try to be relevant. Please, panels, are you over the Main Street med hype for that fake North London club? Let's have fun and have a proper fight up the top. Big love to you all. Well, yeah, fuck Tottenham, I guess, is what you're after. And I think, yeah, all three of us would agree on that. Do we agree on that? Fuck Tottenham, fuck United. Are we all in agreement? I say fuck United. I don't mind Tottenham. They gave me a Champions League. Big up. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. And thank you for taking that off them. Well, not off them, but thank you for taking that final. Um, Stuart also adds, yes, lads, I'm a game attender that now lives in Australia. Big up you guys I watch and love. Question, why is Spurs and Liverpool still the darlings? Spurs are trash and Liverpool shit don't stick. Your thoughts, love for your love. Hey, well, if you watch this show, this is a prime case study where City shit don't stink. Arsenal fans shit. Take as you say, but Arsenal fans don't think their shit stinks. So it, it's just a common theme amongst the clubs. It just happens. We've got to oh, defend that on it. You go back to thing. That's what it is. Yeah. Rational. It means more to us, Take <laughs> Don't start it again. Rational Cat says, happy birthday, Turkish. Love. Looking forward to welcoming your lot to the Etihad. Have a great one. Here is a slice of that oil bag. Big up the whole panel. Steve, please check out Echeverry's goal for River Plate yesterday. Baller. Is that one? Yeah, I've seen it. Good. That's Good goal, still delivered, man. isn't it? That, that deal is done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Big up. I rational cat. Love for the love. Rude What's gentleman. What's his weekly wages? Don't know. I'm not an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> the rude gentleman says big up turkish big steve and james happy to see steve active always missed him on the big six as for the hungarian gerard's biggest fan hammers i need you on rance's channel this week broski hashtag do it for clock oh i'll cook rance again why do people think i'll go on rance's show and he's gonna cook me or something he'll just say united shit i'll agree with him and emphasize on the point and then it'll be a show it won't be like this back and forth <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> he said he'll say united shit i'll agree and emphasize the point <laughs> 10 percent of kane's total penalties were against arsenal 21% of his total Prem penalties, 50% of his goals against Arsenal are penalties. Yeah, yeah, let's just hope we don't concede any penalties. That's the bottom line. Barfly says, may not be fashionable, but I'm really enjoying everything Arsenal are doing. The football is universal, universally revered. I don't care if we don't win anything. I'll take this improvement all day long. See you at the Sofia. Barfly, I liked everything, but the, I don't care if we don't win anything. You've got to care a bit. <laughs> take, that out. take that out. We care. Yeah, I know what you're trying to say, but we care. Like we're not we're not supporting fucking Wrexham here. We're supporting Arsenal. There's a reason why, you know, we must win eventually. Um, that's all the super chats. Um, that's it, really. Any any last thoughts before I leave? Who does it mean more to? Man City? No, I'm joking. Let me not bring this back up. Um, Steve, what are you, what are you yeah, got planning? Oh, by the way, by the way, who does it mean more to? <laughs> before, hold up. Be, Let us know in the up, comment section. Yeah, before before we wrap up, though, just in case anyone thought that that was like serious or whatever, 
this is proper pub football chat. This is what yeah. it's about, mate. Yeah, yeah, you know, people, people, I get it all the time. Big Steve's this, big Steve's that. People ain't got a clue. And then sometimes I do something to troll, but not many people understand what I've said. And then it comes yeah. out worse. I think, oh, my God. You've no, seen it on a big six Turkish for yeah. many years. Yeah, yeah. Many years. Oh, no, mate. Classic football no. talk chat. You need, to, you need to smash the likes for it. This, this is authentic good. content. I'm glad James said that because there's a lot of channels out there that are looking for specific arguments, clips, and all of that. To clip it just, up and put yeah, oh, straight just for him, man. Whereas this I just is... don't understand. I, I don't understand why it can't be that because there is going to be things. I, you can't say you never go on a football show and something another fan says never gets no, you. No, every, every time. You love you. Lad, you love your club so much, you don't want to hear it. So there's going to create those back and forth. James, I was this close. From, I was this close from having a go at you when you said we must. But I thought, let me save that for another show in a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Turkish, you just you just didn't want the verbal smoke with a scouser. That's all it was, Turkish. So if, not, we if, line line if we get over the line with something, if we get over the line with something, Steve, Steve, Steve said, if the scouse logic, you don't want to fight it, mate. You know what I mean? You can't. No, you can't fight it. It's impossible to beat. It's impossible to beat. Scouse logic. It can't. Impossible. It's more undefeated than the Invincibles, the Scouse Logic. It so make sure that you're wrong. It's unreal. You've don't just got to go with it. Don't piss me off and start trying to do debate saying I'm not an accountant. All right, so fucking, we, we, we proceed. <laughs> I said to people, yeah, I said, nah. listen, you lot all know... <laughs> You lot all know Turkish London. If Arsenal wins that, Irish London comes out. And you lot don't want to see Irish London. I'm telling you that now. No Liverpool fan can argue with Irish London. That's that, that's, a, that's a completely different person. So come end of the season, it might be Irish London on this show. This whole channel might be Irish London. But listen. What do you wear a leprechaun suit and dye your beard ginger? <laughs> <laughs> I put my Irish shirt on. Dye my beard ginger. <laughs> Frosty lucky charms and all that. <laughs> You'll see a rainbow coming in from the side here. I'll just be at the bottom of it, mate. <laughs> uh, big up for the Irish as well. Hope you enjoyed the St. Paddy's Day yesterday. Um, and yeah, love for the love, people. Go subscribe to Steve's channel, doing big things. Go subscribe to James's channel, finally back and doing big things consistently. Um, go show some love on the socials. Make sure you're subscribed here, people. Uh, notification bell on we've passed 500 likes but make sure we get to a thousand as soon as possible love for the love we'll be back at some point next week leading up to the big one at the etihad man city versus arsenal james steve love as always people love for the love we'll be back real soon peace Boom.